The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. Good morning and welcome to Guardian Radio AM with C.A. Nuri. I'm here with Aaron Green, who is the host of... On the clock. On the clock. You see how you go on blanket there again? And we have our guest host, Ian Munnings, with us. And whilst we were on the break, they were rowing. They were rowing. It got, it got bitter. I said, man down. I said, I'm going to sit here and just watch these two just row. And guess what this row about? This row about John Canoe. And I said, but y'all still is good at John Canoe? John Canoe's come on TV. I don't really care who wins. So, but I was listening to them go back and forth, right? And I'm saying, okay, I'm going to give you all the space to talk about John Canoe because I want to know... Uh, Whose Junkanoo is it anyway? Is it the is Junkanoo for the Bahamian people, or it's, uh, what's this word I'm going to use? Or is Junkanoo for the Junkanoos? Because I know uh, at times Aaron's called it the Junkanoos, and I said no, it's not Junkanoos. It's called Junkanoos. Is Junk is Junkanoo for the Junkanoos? And I meant I remember I had a conversation with Hall. I forget Eric Hall. He was a diehard Junkanoo, mm -hmm. and it, it, got, it got bitter. It got bitter. He's my good friend. And it got bitter when he said that John Canoe in for the tourists. What do you mean the tourists coming to see John Canoe? He said, John Canoe in for the spectators. I said, what do you mean John Canoe in for the spectators? He said, John Canoe is for the John Canoes. And if you want to come and see it, so be it. If you want to stay home, so be it. But we can have John Canoes for us. Yeah. And the laws and the rules and everything else is for the John Canoes. And this is where... I saw Aaron's eyes go up, and I can say I can leave some space. I can let you and Ian continue to on here to find out who John Canoe for, anyways. And I say, uh, go one family in this whole song. Go ahead. Y'all going quiet now? He don't. He don't want poke the chick Johnny anymore. No, I, I come from the valley. I, I deep in the valley. So when I speak, I speak on John Canoe as a festival as a young boy growing up. Going John Canoe ain't no festival either. It's a parade. A festival. No, it's parade. not a, take a, a take parade. Take that is held. A parade, okay. It's a parade that is held. Okay. And we have it twice out of, uh, in, in the year. Okay. And when we and when and when as a little boy going to Bay Street, and seeing that um, performance and seeing the art and seeing the time that persons put into that cultural event, for me, it it, it sends a sense of pride as Bahamians do what they do and they do it well. Now Aaron might have a different opinion of that, but for me. You know, John Canoe, John Canoe means something. You would suggest because I don't agree with you means that I disagree with you. Listen, first of all, John Canoe belongs to the Bahamas. You think? It can't belong to just John Canoes. It, it, it can't. It can't belong to this generation of Bahamians. It can't belong to the former generation of Bahamians. It can't belong to any particular group, for any particular group to make decisions over. I remember during during the what was it, COVID, uh -huh. and that discussion was had between Lanisha Roll and the I think the Junkanu Commission, whatever that group, on who's who's Junkanu is it anyway? And it was yeah. not a, a direct conversation where they say that what they were just talking about. Um, the Minister of Culture wanted to perform or have Junkanu, and the Junkanu said they have no Junkanu. If you go have junk, you find the people who you want rush to rush out there. That was basically the conversation, and we found out exactly who junk do belong to. The junk do said they ain't Russian. No, the, the junk spectator, and the spectator said, "What you mean you ain't Russian?" And the government said, "What you mean you ain't Russian?" And the conclusion is they ain't Russian. So who junk do belong to? Junk do belong to the people, to Bahamians. And if the people it, would have watched themselves sit on junk do by themselves <laughs> because the junk do said they ain't Russian. I, I think it was a it was it was a matter of. Um, them have an opinion of, of the things or the way that things are supposed to go within the junk in the range. And I think Lanisha had her own perspective. Uh, no, we talk about the, the government. We've seen it. And, so and, and where, where it is that uh, uh, junk the, the government wanted, said it because they invested in it. They said they thought about the Bohemian people and the wider audience and what they want and what was safer. But the question is if the government by extension, I'm not picking on Lanisha, we can move her away from this conversation. If the government wanted to have a performance or have John Canoe perform in a particular type of way on Bay Street at a particular type of time or whatever it is, can the John Canoe say, no, I ain't doing it? But which, which John Canoe? See, 
I, I, who organizes Bay Street parades, and is that... The, the Junkanoo Corporation. Is, but is that the Junkanoo community? But they organize it, and the Junkanoo com community yeah, but is that yield the, to them. But, but again, the organizers but, of Does it? Is, isn't that why the Valley left? No, but it, the, the organize, Isn't the tension in there why the Valley left? The organizers, who does Junkanoo belong to? As I tell you. Okay. I mean, if, if a member of the community didn't in, earnestly and sincerely tell me mm -hmm. that the Junkanoo groups voted for the Valley to come back on Bay Street, right? Mm -hmm. I still expect in the Valleys to come to the Bahamian people and tell them what happened. Right? It, who owns Junkanoo? The Junkanoo groups can't own Junkanoo. Junkanoo is bigger than the Junkanoo groups. Okay. And people perform Junkanoo without the permission of the Junkanoo community, and people perform Junkanoo without the permission yep. of the corporation that organizes the parades, yep. and people perform Junkanoo without the permission of the government, uh, the BJNC, uh, the BJC, right? Every group has a leader, every group has a committee, and then there is the overall um, Junkanoo community um, that deals with the planning and the organization of the, of, the, of, the, the parades. of the parades. Now, the problem is that when you're having a discussion and not involving those particular heads... But who's having the discussion? Whomever. Who's, who, this is where I see him saying the government was having a discussion, like what they would like to see. But then you need to call all of see, these persons to the meeting. Here's what's interesting. When the Junkanoo community, right, when the official, like when the corporation is negotiating with the government, when they tangle in with the government, right, it's always a narrative is created. The government can't own it. It belongs to the Junkanoos. It belongs to the people. The right. people are larger than the Junkanoos. Yeah, yeah, the people and are larger the, than and, the government. Until you vote them in, and then you can't. The do people things. is larger than any government, right? But the people larger than the Junkanoo community as well. The people is no, no. The make the point. The people that the, ah, there so, you go. So this is circular argument. Hey, I mean, uh, so, but I, I want to pivot because no, the, yeah, the, the, the body of people The body of people makes up, up. The body of people makes up the group of mm -hmm. those that are participating in the Junkanoo as a Junkanoos or a Junkanoo. Yeah, but we're making a separation now, Ian, between the Junkanoo community and the people. You see the separation, right? The the, the Junkanoo community. It, everything works in conjunction with each other. If there is nobody, you answering if the there question. is nobody that comes out to watch you, at all. No, we're going to watch them no matter no, what. No, no, I'm just saying. If nobody comes out to watch you, they'll yeah, rush see, all but, the same. But see, see, so that's the question, mm. right? Because we got two articles. Um, I know we're going to pivot. We got two articles. Boleg, more than four thousand Junkanoo tickets sold, right? Mm -hmm. And Boleg, two million spent on um, upcoming Junkanoo parades, right? And so you say, okay, mm -hmm. if the people don't come, what's going to happen? First of all, the people have started. To stop coming. Yeah. Bay Street is emptier and emptier every year. Yeah. Right? The people migrated to Shirley Street where it was free, where they had more control over their own movement, and now they're charging money for Shirley Street as well, but they're not listening to the people who they're taking the money from, both on the ticket side, right, and on the government side. I think when they modernize it so much, they, they take out the feel of what Junkanoo really is. The whole embodiment of what Junkanoo is and the feel. Now, when you say modernize, what I'm going to tell you is when they have adapted the fest, the parades, the parades. to accommodate the Junkanoo's and to accommodate the government and tourists, right? What we've seen, I think, is a devolution of Junkanoo. That's natural. And this is where the rowing part did come in. So I'm going to say, are the Junkanoo's doing Junkanoo justice? Mm. Are they paying attention to the evolution of Junkanoo? Are they demanding more and more money without the, doing the hard work of proving why the money is warranted, showing us where the money is used? I, I can be honest, I tired of my taxpayer dollars going to Junkanoo, but after the Junkanoo parade, it's just Junkanoo costumes littered all over the street like they've gone to waste. Why should I, the taxpayer, care more about the Junkanoo pieces than you, the person who demands my tax dollars, care about it? That's hold for you to pick hold, up afterwards. Hold, hold on, Iron. I don't, I don't think enough money was spent Souvenirs. into Junkanoo to start off with. We had something in this country called Junkanoo Carnival, and I think the money that they spent in one year in Junkanoo Carnival succeeded would be spent in Junkanoo for five Five years. That was the industry they was trying to create. Whatever they was, we had uh, an Junk industry already. No, Junkanoo ain't no industry yet. Yeah, Junk it's, a it's a parade. It's a parade. It's a parade. It's a parade. Thousands and it's thousands a, of no. tourists. What I'm saying is that... to the Bahamas I, to watch. Show Junk me Junk statistics. Was, it's a business. Show me statistics. That doesn't happen. Yeah, Junkanoo was one of the... No tourists come here to see Junkanoo. Junkanoo was one of... They come here to go to the Atlantis in Bahama. No, sir. 
I tell you. No, sir. You go down. I disagree with you. You go to Bay Street and look at Russian Square and look at the faces and see if they ain't Bahamians there. See, you and they me. They Bahamians on Bay Street. Me and you used Bahamians to go to Junkanoo ba- downtown. You know, so he's going back to us? I talk about tourists. How many tourists you used to see down not, there? Not, me and you been down there. John Bolter. They to, were to, Conky Joe Bahamians. No, sir. Are you trying to say they ain't Conky Joe Bahamians? I know who Long Island's when I see them or no. I no, know. Sir. No, on, I know Long let's, Island. Let's get back but, to but it, right? We, we need to change pivots yeah, still. We, we do, but I can end it on this Junkanoo community demands to be put on a pedestal, and the question is... No bang for your buck. Are they, A, are they deserving of said pedestal? Are they, are they making decisions, I wouldn't say the right way, but are they taking into account the holistic movement of Junkanoo? Who it belongs to? Are they making the decisions from the perspective that it belongs to them? And because they perceive that they put in the bulk of the work, mm-hmm. they get the, the thrust of the decision? Aaron, I can say this to you. Um, I, I, have a lot of, I have a lot of friends and, and persons deep, that, that cousins and, and, and uncles that put their blood, sweat, and tears into what we call Junkanoo. They spend their own monies or their pockets. Good for them. And they build their costumes, etc., for the love of Junkanoo. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, that has nothing to do with government or private sector um, spending money into them. Mm. This is uh, something that they do relentlessly. Let the Russian but they, they, what they do? Let, let the Russian in their backyard. Let the Russian in their backyard. Not on that government do. street. This is something that they do. Right, it's and, so, it's and so it's, incum- Ian, it's, inc- it's incumbent upon the Junkanoo committee to not let the efforts of their own members go to waste and be frittered away every year through a lack of coordination and a lack of real cohesive concerted effort, not just to hold the art form and the cultural form together, but, but, but to propel it forward. But Y'all just do Junkanoo for Junkanoo, say Aaron. get drunk, leave the costume in the road, but and go home. But Aaron, that's their cost. Them. They spend their money on it. But, then, but my reality but is you're that, around yeah, again. But, but, but you're all around no, no, again. But this is my reality, Aaron. The Ministry of Youth and Sports and Culture, the Ministry of Tourism, they are then the function of them is to create now opportunities to deal with the, with the, with the tourism sector. So these costumes that you looked at and the small pieces that can be used, why, why haven't them, they, gotten together to build a museum or figure out how we they going just to give you our property? Just give you our land <laughs> to just build a museum. Fill your own museum. You, Listen, hold on. You need okay. money. Ian, let me give you... <laughs> you need money. Ian. South, South. CA, you need money. South, South. How many South, South do you think they need to build? The Couple. government just give two... Uh, CA, how much money do you think they need to do Hold that? on. Ian, the government just gave two million dollars. Hold on. That in must resources. Be for the bleachers. Listen. That must be for the bleachers because they spend money Listen, every two. year... They contract private person. I don't know who they is. Who they? What they? And I haven't touched nobody. And I'm a national con. But we we spend some money to rent those bleachers every year. Where did whomever the people are? And in. find out what kind of money they spend to rent the bleachers, and then we can figure out it's two million dollars gone. But that's another story. L- let's pivot. Because you're, you're be- no, 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 Aaron. No, 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 no. I I I want to talk about my water. I want to talk about weed, and and I was promised that. A decision about weed would have happened before the end of the year. It's now December 7th, uh, 2022, and now I'm hearing that there ain't going to be no decision. The AG said I happened in red. I, 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 I told you that. I, I told guess you, you that. did. You did. But I, I, it's a new day. It's a new day, and I, and I expect if we can make promises and whatever it keep is, it. you keep it. And it, it seems, and you see, it's, it's so flippantly dismissed. So, well, okay, it just ain't gonna happen. But that's and see, that's why I, I have concern. What reason they could give? There's a reason, see. Yeah. What, what's the reason you think? There's one or two reasons, see. I, I, I think that the marijuana is, um, is going to be passed. I, we, we know that, that the world has done change. Places around the world already legalized it and for small amounts of medical uses, et cetera. Ian, do me a favor. Let, let's go to the call for a second. Call. We'll be definitely going back to the conversation. Good morning, caller. Sorry about the wait. You're on Guardian Radio AM with Cecil Newry. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Am I still I'm on your show again, ma'am? <laughs> uh, no, you're on my show now. Uh, who who show I on? The greatest takeover anybody show. Sparky. No, no Sparky. <laughs> <laughs> From the beginning of the show... <laughs> From the beginning of last month, Wednesday is on the clock Guardian Radio AM mashup. Don't be disrespectful about it, Sparky. Just try and call back. That's all. Just try and call back. Oh, sure you are, anyway. <laughs> anyway, but <laughs> I want to talk about weed. 
right? Yeah. Uh, Pause. Let, let me let's just clarify it. It's a mashup on Wednesday. It's both of our shows. Yes, but I, I would talk about weed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that's not for you. That's for the audience. <laughs> so we can end the disrespectful engagement. You see, you see the mashup coming, right? It's bo- I, it's both of our all shows. W- all I want to do is talk about weed. No, I want to talk about weed. If where do you think this law is going to come Jeez. eventually? You might have to. You might have to travel arms and hand. I believe. I believe the, the government is tarrying because they know that it's going to, only going to be medical marijuana, right? Medical marijuana. And that is, it can't be everybody, a free for all, free for all to be growing weed My to God, sell to, to the hospital, um, right? And it's not going to be no export, no exporting of weed automatically. And I think that we are far, and I don't think our government or the Christian Council are even interested in that. And because Why do you call the Christian Council name? Because they, yeah, they, they, they have, have input. They have a role to play. They have a yeah, lot of roles to play in a lot of We, we meet with them. Yeah. The government meet with them a couple of times. Yes. And so the Junkanoo committee have more influence. The, only but Junkanoo, though. But not regarding the morals of and and the, and, and, of the, and the Christian council said they cool with medical marijuana, too. So the government is going to go thrust into that. But making that the final decision and, and, and making uh, the persons who, who claim they are vested inside this, this marijuana and alienate those people who are not in the medical marijuana uh, uh, realm or, or grade, I think that's the reason for this delay. I, I, I think that the government wants to make a decision. It's just that they don't want to make that decision and alienate a number of their, uh, their supporters at this present I'm, time. I'm going to agree with you, um, CA, to, to, to a point. Um, I think the same thing, Aaron, because look at it from a perspective like this. It's the same thing like the numbers. Once this is passed, there's there's only a handful of persons that are going to be licensed to actually grow this or or have this mar- medical marijuana growing. First of all, they need land. Second of all, they need a lot of money. They can be able to pay these licenses. So that particular aspect, they haven't sought that out yet to figure out who's going to get what. But it's not going to be every John, Harry, and Tom. That's going to talk, but you can grow this in back of your yard and sell this to nobody. That didn't no. happen. Let's no. go to the call and then let me read go from ahead. the yes. article. Uh, good morning, caller. Morning, Ellen. Morning, how you do? Fine. Good morning to um, my buddy, uh, Mr. Nui. Morning to you, man. Mr. Nui, let me give you all my number because I, 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 I am a legend. I can educate you all on, on these things, but I can need the whole two hours to deal with you and Aaron. It's going to have to be between now and Friday. After that, I can be kind of busy. I can give you all some little. One who let slew. You know, I'm going to say I'm a legend. I was honored in the government host by the Prime Minister, Mr. Lee. I mean, he made the pay to Although they ain't giving the money, spent $10 million of my money to John Clues. And half you all can't tell me why John Clues is, is on Bay Street right now to be. Because they try to run us off Bay Street. So Lennon was the Prime Minister. But I would give us a little clue so we can educate you all on a lot of things. And John Clues do belong to the John Clues. Because when we can spend, the government never give us no money. We spend our own money. I, I, I can remember time ago, because Shell is a sponsor, Mr. Cold People, God bless his soul. When he, he came, come in my shop and to do some sightseeing, I say, Mr. Cold People, see all this money, this my money, you know. This not to do no Shell money, this my money. And why, see, Aaron, I know a lot of things. And now don't get in the back of them days, we had a drug problem, we had a gang problem, and I had to deal with young boys and young fellas and in the fourth and castle community. I am the community person. I want my own support team, my own basketball team. Never have no government for a dollar. Never go to nobody. Just have my money and take care of my boy. Teach them John Canoe, teach them my trade and everything. See, we to travel with, with tools and back in the day, representing our country. We've been all over the world. Canada, all about. New Orleans, all about, all about, all about. Germany, Europe, whatever what have you. Yes, we had our. Museum downtown. I was the first person who had a costume in that museum, me and Bernard Gay did it. You see? But see, but I don't want to spread all, all the history, but you only take my number, 436 and write me on, on see, your that's show. A, so uh, educate you guys. Respectfully, <laughs> respectfully, though, right? Repeat the number. 436 mm-hmm. 6184. Mm-hmm. I answer it 24 7. The next phone crossed, so I could get another phone and put a chip in that one, so I could deal with that. And I'll educate you guys. Trust me. You ought to learn a lot of stuff. See, look here. See, I can I get, I get respectfully row with you right now before I go to the next caller, right? Go ahead. How are you going to sit there and tell me, but I ain't going to tell you all the history. This is, this is it. How are you going to say, gonna say you own John Canoe and you own the history and it's yours to decide when the people get to know it, when they get to hear about it, how they get to hear about it. It's y'all to decide all the decisions to make about it. 
Just because I don't have any money don't mean that I can't be an equal owner in John Canoe like you. But Aaron, 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 this, <laughs> everything I, I, I get my head, I, I, look here, I was beginning to write two books now, and anybody who came to my university to tell you, I could write two books right now. Because everything I say to you right now, back in the day, I could go up my diary and write it down and date it, and, and see, I, gotta, I, I will bring the book on the show. And you can read it for yourself. But, and when I say the history, I just want to say, I'm saying on the show right now, I'm saying when they become a guest on the show so I can educate the Bahamas. See, John Lou is the one who only thing keep this country together, you know. See, I can remember we had the Saksarama. It was very nice. Joe Billy, the Wadi at Senwell and so on. We get to go Fox Hill. That was good, you know. Huh? The John Lou people, we get not no government, not no Christian council. Us. The people who they become dumb. When people come in my shop, I'm kept a lawyer, doctor. You ain't got no no more say than me. This is my shop. I run this. You can smoke the dope in there, and you can do certain things. Mm -hmm. You come there to wake. You ain't got to stand up and do foolishness. That's how serious the talk was, because we know the stuff that might be different in this country. Be different in this country. No politicians, no so, party. Let me ask you. Let me ask you some serious questions, right? Go ahead. How, how, any, how any shack in the Bahamas could burn down? How is it that the Junkanoo community hasn't come together to ensure that every single shack has the proper, has been built to the proper standards, has what it needs to be fire safe, right? How is it that we don't have a unit at the University of the Bahamas and Junkanoo, like Trinidad, have a unit at UE on Carnival? Right? Like How is it that we don't have the books yet? How is it that we letting the history die with the Junkanoo members? Aaron, I can tell you, Aaron, I can help you, you know. That's why I say, and I did the whole two I, I can tell you, see, we got some people in Parliament, the minute they get in there, they think they're already Jesus Christ. Thing. Some of them not even want to benefit in their life. Well, this is the last Aaron. thing. How is it that these politicians think that they could rely on the Junkanoo committee to back them? How come they yes. think they got y'all in their back pocket? No, no, see, sometimes I'm Aaron. See, see sometimes I get. Hyper. See, and they know they're lousy, you know. They know they're lousy. You know, the, 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 they might say, what they want to say, but Papa, you know, Papa gave us a kind of escrow. Papa used to come now. Papa, Papa was in the junk room. Mr. Chrissy was a junk room. Mm -hmm. Documents with the junk room. Mr. Chrissy ain't really doing nothing for us. And that's a question. I could, to, he's one of I, li one us. Listen, I got to go, but I could be honest with you. I, 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 I ready to ask how y'all could let Minis, how you could let Minis and Christy rush with y'all. <laughs> How y'all let any politician rush with y'all? Yeah, but, I mean, but they remember, they don't say nobody cannot be a member of an organization. You know, you, you pay your dues, you sign your form, they do everything, you get your ID, et cetera. No, but you know, it came from a long way, but I just hope the Joshua crew cares to further, further thing. Absolutely. They can, they can be the ones who can take care of me. And yeah. Listen, thank you very much, because I, right. I know I come in hot with my opinion on John Canoe this morning. So I thank you for I, I entertaining see that. me. I see that. You just talk straight, straight, straight through the whole show. Go, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. You have anything but, else? Or oh, you have another caller? No, no. I, another, go past the caller through. Good morning, caller. Good morning. Uh, on? Yes, you on. Oh, yeah. Uh, what I want to say to JJ, JJ, I was rushing from my eight years old. For me, it was a nation sedition voice. From 12, pardon me, 12. Uh, the thing is, politics, Born into Jonkanu. And I, when we brought wool in there to draw for us, the Saxons, I always tell them, don't let politics get into it. But politics brought them out. You see what I'm saying? Jonkanu was where we, as young boys, uh, rush up and down the street to amuse ourselves. When the police come, we had to run, pick up our drum and cowbells and run. Okay? I got so you. after... It got so big, the government got into it, and government wanted us to come and base it, and they start sponsoring us, which in the still wasn't enough to sponsor a group, because uh, whatever they give, uh, one like me still have to pay hundreds of dollars every year of boxing on, uh, boxing day on New Year's to get my costume uh, finished to get out on base it. But what I am saying is, right, the leaders, they went along with the politicians. Okay? I got you. Thank you, Brayman. One more. Good morning, caller. Yeah, man. I like callers. Yeah, we are. Good morning. Good morning, Miss Green again. Yes, sir. Say good morning to Cecil. It's our show today. Yes, good morning, everybody. Yeah. 
Good morning, now, listen, now, so let, 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 listen, you, Ms. Green, I was listening to what you said, and I agree with about 50% of what you said. Let me tell you something. Uh -huh. Before politics got into junk, you, know, listen, you didn't listen to Sparky now. All of them guys came behind Sparky. Because mm -hmm. I was out there in 1958 with the Valley Boys. Mm -hmm. There was no Saxons. There was a group on the south side of the, on Mont Royal Avenue, headed by Dr. Off, um, Daddy, Dame, Mr. Mr. Eugene, Fitzgerald. But that name was not the Valley Boys, but there was a junk new group down there. There was a junk new group in the east held by the Spurgeon Smith. I think they were called the Punch Bowl. There was another group down in the vest. I think there was Chippy. It was like, it was like a, a, a war between uh, communities, the east against the west. Uh-huh. Now, the first one of them that I had a sponsorship that I know that came in with the sponsorship was the Valley Boys. I told you this over and repeatedly. Uh -huh. My mother was asked by Gus Cooper, who wanted to split away from Spurgeon Smith, when the, a lot of people from the Shirley Street area used to go to St. Matthew's Church, moved over the hill on the south side into the Valley area. It wasn't even called the Valley. called Sales Edition. When they started to build St. George's Church, the sister church of St. Matthew, Gus Cooper them go into St. John's College. I think Gus was around 14, 15, 17 years old. Gus Cooper wanted to start his own group. In his father's garage, his father's garage in Tenmid Street, the corner just south of Home Farm uh -huh. He came to him on Gully Inez, uh, um, Roy Fountain, Freddie Fountain, Letty Taylor, Kippy Pendler, my brother, they got together with my mother, who was a secretary to Mr. A.B. Malcolm on Bay Street, Texaco Gas Station. Okay. They asked Ms. Aunt Gwetty, they called Aunt Gwetty, if she could get a sponsorship from Mr. Malcolm, because Mr. Malcolm used to be, he used to enjoy um, um, Jokaloo also. That's where the white people and everybody used to enjoy Jokaloo. All right? All right. Okay, and then this, my mother... Got the sponsorship, 16 pounds, a box of cowbells, a box of whistles. Mr. Mr. Malcolm also used to sell the cowbells to the farmers of East who had cows. Yeah. You know, the, the bells hanging around the cow neck. Yes, sir. That's some little small uh, brass cowbells before Uncle Dolly Hyland them started making, welding the big cowbells, what you see now. Yeah. They used to get these little small little things. Sparky, thing, I got to go now. Thing. Sparky, I, I'd like to, I thank you very much. That's a great excerpt. I can try pull that from the radio so we could replay that at some point. Good morning, caller. Good morning, caller. You got you there? All right. I can go back again. Oh, we have text there. Oh, you, we got a ton of text. <laughs> Tons of text. But I want to talk about Halkidas, though. I want to talk about Halkidas and we, how... We still ain't finished talking about the marijuana. Oh, that's because you're always talking about Chokadoo. I am no, that's because the guy called. That's because JJ called with some super, super so good information. Is, is, is the phone lines clear? I'll the, make the, sure. the phone lines just light up again, Mr. Let, let the phone lines go. If they, if they spend any money to call, uh, let them come. Good let morning, come. caller. Good morning. How are you doing? Good, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I think, you know, for the public, you know, you know for for all the guys, you know, who are in, in like, active politics. Yeah. You know, having this, it's Jokinu, it's like a, it's like a form. It's like a form of absolution. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, if they could get on day, yeah, and they could um, um shake, shake and you know and go up Make and down me. the street, they feel as they can have their souls <laughs> yeah. washed or cleaned up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolution, like confession. I got you. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you. All right. There? One more caller. Good morning, caller. Hey, Aaron, what's up? Everything's good. How you doing? Uh, good, good, good day, Mr. Nguyen. And I think you have a guest today. Yes, yeah. Mr. Munnings. Mr. Munnings. Um, you know, last week when the the gentleman um, from the Junk Crew, um Association, I think I think that's the president or something like that, when they announced that they're going up, I think with five five dollars on the ticket. Yeah. But what I don't understand for the life of me as a being a Bohemian, uh, especially. A, patriotic bohemian who believe in my people how is it that some of my own people now don't get me wrong people don't condemn me for this how is it that y'all could find money to go to barris hammond concert depth to depth what do you name dexter docks and y'all 
if everyone they cry on social media for five dollars, this is our <coughs> culture, people. This is our culture. Reggae ain't our culture. Soca ain't our culture. Junker new is our culture. Miss Miss Green, I have a nephew, my brother's son. He's one of the biggest promoters in the Bahamas, not in Nassau, in the Bahamas. Uh -huh. And I'm, I, I can't wait to see him for Christmas to tell him anytime you decide to do a show, and uh, um, put Bahamian artists as open up, put up, put up, give them that recognition, exposure. That's okay, the policy because, as it stands, you know. Any yeah, any foreign it, artist performing, there has to be a Bahamian act it, performing it, it, first. And, and Miami, Aaron, it, it doesn't with everybody. It doesn't, and, and it, 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 it makes me because let's say for instance, you have a a Bahamian, you have you have like all the Bahamian all stars, and you have a concert. And you even have a junk canoe. People go into the foreigners, foreign concert. Yeah, you can't. Bahamians, I can't tell you all how to spend your money, but we have to support our own. We have to figure out how to invest all in right? our own. The, the same way those persons have to find money to go abroad to, to, to represent us. Remember now, all of those junk canoes who go away, they represent not one person, they represent the Bahamas. Now, now do when it. Some reggae stars go away. They represent their music. They ain't. They don't. Some of them don't even care about Jamaica. Do it. Look here. That's a strong, solid point you're making. You know, that's I, a that's a solid point you're making. Uh, I just want to tell you. The gentleman in there. Hey, hey, I encourage you, man. If you all put the tickets up a little bit more, hey, behaving people. What's what's fifty five dollars? Come on, man. What's fifty five dollars when you pay in uh, VIP? The platinum concert, two, three hundred dollars. I, I, uh, but I, I, I appreciate the point. It's a strong, solid yeah, point, I, you know. I, but I hear today to tell I, you, I, I ain't paying the five dollars extra. Have, do it. I have. I just say it on the radio. My nephew um, is a, is a promoter of Fluid Factory. Yeah. He's calling Pinky Claiborne, and I can tell Claiborne Christmas come, bro. Listen to me. Every concert you bring in this in this country, put a Bahamian artist on them, or put some kind of junk who. Uh, let them get that exposure. Do Come it. On. Hold on. Tell him to go to the, uh, um, not be moved, uh, go to the no, UAB, the United uh, Bahamian Artists Union with Link Scavella. Yes. And I, and I, and my, because Bahamian, the policy is, is that there has to be a Bahamian I, I, act if you have having a foreign act playing. See, see Ms. Green, politics, but PLB that means so I ain't got to push no more. But I can push for my Bahamian artists now. <laughs> I can push. <laughs> Listen, do, look here. But I, I, I upset. <laughs> I upset. Yeah, I don't want to pay the five dollars. You know, come on, man. I, even people, you know, go out and support Junkanoo. If the tickets, if they go up even five more dollars, support them, man, because they support thank us. Thank you. They, 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 they go all over the world to make us look good. Y'all have a good day in that studio area. Thank you, man. Do it. I don't know if there's anything I could argue about. Everything you said made sense. Support the Bahamian artists. Support the Bahamian artists. If you're promoting a foreign act, you must have a Bahamian artist first. Mm -hmm. Everything you said made sense. I don't know if I pay in the $5. I do want to say this, right? That boy, d -Mac got one concert out by one place called The Farm. Mm -hmm. $25 in, t in advance and $30 at the door. And they must see have 15, 20 different Bahamians performing. Mm -hmm. They get about 15 or 20 different Bahamians performing. The farm tend to do well. Yeah, so I like, I, I with you, but I don't know if I won't pay the $5, do it. First of all, I want to know why am I paying the five dollars? A second thing I want to know is why are we still renting bleachers? Who are we rent renting bleachers from? Mm. Surely the government who has invested so much money in sports tourism has mm. already invested money in bleachers, mm. multiple sets of bleachers. So I don't understand why why I got to pay an extra five dollars. An extra five dollars for what? You say an extra five dollars to add to the fifty dollar ticket in VIP? That don't seem like much. But what if I only pay in ten dollars on Shirley Street? That's a whole fifty percent increase. And what if I got seven or eight children? Or what if I like one of these great Bahamian man and woman out there who just sponsor insurance to come to Junkanoo. And I got to add that extra $5. And I see the article that say they're partnering with Alive. They're going to provide us with a new Junkanoo experience, right? A different way to interact with the Junkanoo groups. But if I buy in my ticket online, aren't there fees associated with that? And that means on top of the extra $5, I got to pay extra fees. Or is the government eating those fees? And here's the next thing. I need the whole Junkanoo world to know. Why am I paying VAT on Junkanoo? I refuse to pay VAT to go experience Junkanoo. 
Looks like you can wash Jungkook from home. But that's another question. But let's talk about her life. We're moving from this Jungkook conversation, yeah, she man. She's going on, but see, she's going on the vibe just again. No, 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 no. We can move. Let, 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 see, because and you I move got from 18 Mar- texts and you, another call. You really move from marital marijuana because you already want to talk about it. You all going to Jungkook. But to talk. But, no, but I, I wanted see, to talk I, about I, it. I see a live saying things. They're hurting. I see a live saying they're hurting and, and that they ain't making no profits. A live or cable Bahamas? With, with all that's me. No? No. I think for legal purposes, they are distinct companies. Oh. Maybe subsidiaries so of which, one which another. Which one hurt? Is Cable Bahamas hurt? Well, I think it's the one who said that they ain't paid their dividends. And five. Is, it, is it Cable Bahamas that said that? Or is yeah. it Urca that said that Cable Bahamas said that? Then Urca, Urca charged in Cable Bahamas? So, right. There is a fine that's been levied against Cable Bahamas. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead and then you talk because you, you corrected me. I got you. Right. So, uh, if you check out Eyewitness News, you check out the Tribune, there is an article... In uh, regulators throw out eighty-five million dollar cable warning. That's the headline from the Nassau Tribune, mm-hmm. right? Uh, regulators yesterday rejected Cable Bahamas's warning that the fine imposed on it for poor pay TV service quality would quote detract close quotes from its eighty-five million dollar capital investment in network infrastructure upgrades. See, it's even cost me stutter. Okay. So, so basically, Cable Bahamas said, you know, if you all find us, we're not going to be able to afford this upgrade that we plan it. Well, well, they charge you for basically everything now. They charge you for everything, and they mummy, they charge you for. Caller, we 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 can bring you on on the next side of this break. It, it's right now it's uh, eleven forty two, and it's our time to have this break. Um, but Cable Bahamas need to do more, and, and Erica need to charge them because the reception ball for Drew. Yeah, and sometimes, I, there are times, I, I, I mean, my cable be off for three, four, five days. I mean, these people just tell you, you don't need a guy to watch cable. Oh, you're yeah. them just turn on the TV and watch it. Yeah. We're going to go to a break. We'll be right back. One in every four people in the Bahamas face some level of food insecurity. Through our annual Feed 5000 program, AML Foods remains steadfast in our commitment to help those struggling with hunger and will donate 5000 to provide holiday meals to families this Christmas. But we need your help. From November 14th to December 19th, show your support and donate at the register at any Solomon's, Costright, Solomon's Fresh Market, Exuma Markets, or Domino's locations in New Providence, Grand Bahama, and Exuma. Together, Let's put an end to hunger. A local paper in Grand Bahama is back every Tuesday as a section of the Nassau Guardian. Available at local stores, gas stations, pharmacies, Western Bakery, and Bellevue Gifts. Daily and, of course, on Tuesdays, too. Want to reach your Grand Bahama audience? Then call Barefoot Marketing at 827-4578 or message them for ad rates via their Facebook page. Advertising opportunities now include classified ads, too. Keep up with all the latest Grand Bahama news in the Guardian newspaper every Tuesday. Love the show? Want to give your support? Become a sponsor today. Call 302-2300 for our rates and packages. That's 302-2300. Become a sponsor on Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. And welcome back to Guardian Radio in the AM with C.A. Nuri. And of course, we have on the clock with Aaron Green. And our guest host today is Ian Munnings. Um, but we have a caller who is waiting on for a while. So we just go straight to the caller. Then I'll have Aaron Re- Green read all of the texts. And it looks like the people want to talk about junk. So I'm not even going to push to try to change the <laughs> subject. Yeah, because I wouldn't want to talk about weed. But nobody want to talk about weed. So we, we'll talk about junk. But go ahead, caller. Welcome to Guardian Radio in the AM. To get out of the day, boy. Yeah, I want to know why the weed ain't coming true. Uh, and the excuses. The moment they wait till the end of the year, you can get the weed. The end no, of the, no. <laughs> that the end of the year coming and going. He say the not. Li- he say not likely. <laughs> <laughs> Look like we gotta wait till next year. The next year, the but, end of the year got again. Yeah. But uh, good morning. How you doing, Miss Green? Good morning, Leslie. Neely. Neely. Money. You talk with me, Neely. Yeah. Uh, and the 
morning, Bob. I have a trivia question. If anyone can answer this, I give them uh, some leave. You can get to that. But anyway, okay. uh, how did John Canoe get on Bay Street? Anybody can answer that. How did John Canoe get on Bay Street? Why John Canoe uh, get on Bay Street? And they used to rush from one side out from out west and meet uh, by no, that's girl on East Street too. And they meet in a junction of Bay Street. Yeah, that, that ain't what I yeah. That what I understood was that uh, you know they used to give the slaves off. The off man Sunday. called Johnny Canoe. No, no, and no. You remember different. they call it over the hill after dark. All the black people supposed to be over the hill. Uh-huh. Right? So they decide when. What they can do is to, to on the day off, the slave day off, they can rush over on Bay Street on there, and then after a while, they say, um, I think uh, Mr. Seminet, uh, I think yeah, the so, mm-hmm. you know the white knights out. So I think Mr. Seminet, and he he decided to let them uh, continue it on because he saw how it was good for tourism and all that stuff or whatever, and that's how it get there. So but how you know, that's two different eras, right? You talking about. 1838, and then you go on all the way to 1930s, 1940s. That's what that's about how much years. That's almost 100 well, years well, difference, man. Well, 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 like I say, he decided that it was good for tourism. That's how it gets to how it is now. You know, we used to have the overnight uh, cruise ships, whatever. But actually, Duncan used to be a nuisance. They had a law against Duncan Oo. You uh-huh. know, it was like all this stuff right there in the uh, Ministry of uh, Sports uh, and Culture. Yeah. But it actually was that they they went on Bay Street because they, after that, they couldn't go on Bay Street. So they decided they, uh, you know, bum rush Bay Street. I got you. And, 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 and. Thank you. Anyway, you all have a good day. Uh, keep up the good way, guys. I hope you get to read the book. Yeah, man. Soon. You you were talking as I'll talk. You ain't working for us. Write it. I need you to write that down. You need to write that and and write all of the stories down. See, I I, I don't like this idea, right? That you're not a real Bahamian if you don't know enough about John Canoe. But you can only learn these things if people deem you worthy, right? They only can tell you if they like you, if they think you're worthy of this information. That can't. That John Canoe can't belong to the whole Bahamas. This is why John Canoes and and historians don't get along because the historian said this is this is what John Canoes about and the John Canoes said no 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 this is our John Canoe and he ain't about that but anyway let's go read some text all right so uh, text says C. Allen Johnson has been telling the Bahamas about becoming the jurisdiction for digital assets for almost eight years before it reached the Bahamas maybe we should listen to him now because he knew before it came go to C. Allen John C. Allen social media pages and see what we are speaking about in recent years, was predicted by him a decade before we started our Just Talk regime. I've taken his personal course in creating a personal economy in the digital era. The thing I say to C. Allen Johnson all the time is, you got to write it down, you got to put it in a book, you got to open a school, right? But the information that you are attempting to educate us with requires more than 15 second, 60 second sound bites on a radio. There are better formats to share that in. All right, another text. Good morning, please read my text. My daughter was watching TV. And say congratulations to the prime minister. This is an allegation that somebody is sending a, uh, the, the prime minister was ordained as a 33 degree Mason last week. What is that and why? Dear Texter. Will you join the Mason and you find out? You have to become a member of the Lodge to find out why it's important, apparently. Yeah, just, like the junk canoe, really just like the Junk Canoe uh, discussion, who the thing really belong to? Who does the country really belong to? Thank you very much for that text. Junk Canoe belongs to the Bahamian culture, and those who partake in it are merely stewards of the event. I wonder which Lodge the Prime Minister belongs to. Masonic Masons. Mason, all kind of Masonic Masons. Prince Hall. Me and Prince Hall. I think it was the Prince Hall. And I wonder if, it, it which noise. degree he was before this. I don't know, but he's, he's they, they gave him. He must have been a thirty. Or is it, is it, or is it honorary? This is like one of the highest in the region. Is an honorary degree. 
Yeah. Right. No, I have a lot of near issues with Masons. You know, I, I don't know. I mean, look like I the mean, prime minister ahead of them. Because I got a, I got a set of stairs I need to build. I have, yeah. I have one yeah. thought yeah. in this scenario. That's carpenter, though. That ain't no Mason. One thing I'd like to bring to the attention, Aaron. Yeah. I'm reading the papers this morning. It says, uh, You got to get closer to the mic. Reading the newspaper this morning, the Bahamas among nations exposed to severe food insecurity. Yeah, I was talk, talking about that too, but he's talking about junk food instead. I think that is, I think, <laughs> no, but I think that is, that is a topic that we have to talk about. But they say one in every four Bahamian has issue with food security, uh, which means that's over 100,000 people have yes, issues sir. securing food uh, on, a, on a daily basis. But yeah. I, I don't think people are, uh, understand what that means or analyze what that means. That's 100,000 people who are struggling to make ends meet in terms of food, yeah. securing food. I, 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 that's a concern. It's a big concern. I, uh, and I, I don't understand wh why. I don't understand after the last three years of Bahamas Feeding Network, food distribution plans. Something broken. How is it that we have not captured this data? How is it that we have not, how, how is it that the, the Ministry of Agriculture has not already partnered with the MPs and constituencies to identify the people who should be readily identifiable, right? Mm -hmm. Because of the pandemic to figure out where they need to set up community and backyard farming projects mm -hmm. with small, simple things. To move us away from receiving this fish food and to turn to fishermen. And we're not doing that. We are just pacifying those people who are hungry at the present need, how at many the present time. How much money was put into agriculture? That's a question you need to ask yourself. In the budget. Agriculture doing one this man. Um, uh, How much money Sweden is doing an awesome job. No, I'm not saying it's just that there's, there's no data. Budget. There's no data that's coming forth at this present time. Right. And then, and then there's a... I think there's a lot of work to be done in shifting the culture so people could see the problem, right? And then could see the solution. The vast majority of people just don't believe that we can feed ourselves, right? Mm. And I think that part of that is dispelling the myths that the merchant class have, have, have promulgated. A, a, a but, but I don't want you to move from my text. Can you finish reading all the text? Yes, sir. They text. They, they spend their six cents. Yeah, man. Mr. Nuri, John Canoe has taken a big step backwards. We have sold out the, the parade to the sponsor of today. How could you allow the sponsor to have full control of the sales of tickets? online when so many persons wanting to watch the parade can't shop online but the cha chairman said let their I don't we don't know if the chairman said let their family help them or said let the people's family help them get to junk canoe my 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 thing is this uh, a thousand tickets were sold on the day of mm -hmm. the release four thousand by the end of the weekend right I think by Monday who bought all those tickets it gotta be you are there resellers buying tickets? It could be the hotels. The hotels get a large number of, of, yes. of, of tickets, too. So it could be resellers to go and resell it again. And are they allowed to, to, to increase the price on the ticket? They shouldn't be allowed, but who knows? Absolutely. Like, these are things that, that I want to know. Is it against the law to increase it? It has to be, man. Don't they, say it has to be. Is there anything in writing? That's what's important. That's what we've been arguing about. <laughs> what? Or discussing. We've been discussing. The I mean, outside of the associated fees, the fees associated with an online purchasing platform, I can't imagine that people have been given permission to resell junk new tickets I, at a higher price. But I don't think it would be permission. As a matter of fact, there's no. nothing put in place to say that you can't do it. This is what we're talking about. It's illegal, price. right? It's, you can't do it. So right. if I have my junk food tickets that I bought for Bay Street, and I say, I have my junk food tickets for sale, but I and bought it for no 50 more. but it's no more, I will sell you for $60. You mean you I can't? You scalping? I scalping. You I, just, I have it available. Fast. I have my tickets available if you, you want to buy you it. You scalping? No, no, no. I have a ticket. I'm not going anymore. You scalping? And, and there is no more uh, that particular um, seats available. And if, if it was $50, then. That's quite capitalism. I said, I want $70 for it. You tell me I can't do it. I got a, oh, I got an important one here. Happy birthday, C.A. Newry, from your family, especially Kenra, Kennedy, Natalie, and Maddie, and the whole Francis Dames Ingram clan. The whole clan. We love you. Oh, well, look at that. I appreciate yeah. that. Happy, happy birthday. That's my clan. Text say, well, Muddles, y'all cut Sparky with all the great history to entertain some jokey callers. Dear Texter, first of all, mm. the first time I cut Sparky is because he was being unnecessarily rude. The second time I cut Sparky is because I've explained to Sparky over and over again that the information that he holds is now a matter of national security. It's not his to just share with us when he want to feel special, when he want attention from the public. 
if he demands airtime with the attitude that he does, then he has an obligation to document that information in his head so it could be shared with future Bahamians. You want be special. You want me to treat you like you special, but you don't want to be the special that you are? So you say you need to write it down. Same thing with C. Allen. You so, guys are too C. valuable. See, I need to write these things now. Yes, you need a school. Stop calling in the talk no, shows. No, no, keep, no, keep going stop again. expecting three to four to five to eight minutes to share this information. I, I think I get what Aaron's saying. You, the information that is in their head, right? The future of the Bahamas needs to know that. They live through an era. And, and, and the era that they live through gave them an understanding of who we are and where we came from as a people. Put that in writing. Let the people know. No problem. Let's finish with the text. If the ticket for five dollars extra, they better have cushions on the bleachers. They did not explain why they increased the price, eh? No. Is, I, it, is the gas increase? You just said um, everything to, going up. Like what? Everything going up. Like like what? But like what? Everything going up. Like what? They, Ga- gas, right? No, no. They can just tell you it was hot, and then we inspect it's gonna be a little cold. So everything going the up. The temperature went up. That's why they increase. The Ministry of Agriculture needed a new director of agriculture. Who's the director of agriculture now? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Not sure. Thank you, Texter. One more text. Hi, Mr. Newry. Happy birthday. Thank Hope you. Hope you live to enjoy many more. Many more. Good health and long life. You made me cry when you said that you were fo- that they found you by the lake. Is that really true? It's a real true story. That woman should be put in jail and throw away but the I got, key. I got a, a new adopted family now, and, and now they take care of me well. I hear your last text. Uh, not last, but another great show as usual. The word special have a different definition. And to that definition, Sparky is very special. Look here, Sparky's a national treasure. And I'm not making fun of him when I say that. Mm -hmm. That the information that he has, he has an obligation to us to document it. So how does he go about to write this book? He just get the get the re- recorder, get your phone, get the recorder, start recording it, post it to WhatsApp, so it's in the cloud. And then we're going to put it in a transcription service. And then just forward it and tell someone to say that it record it record then, then, formally. But listen, the first thing is to document it. And the second thing is we can put it together in a book. Mm. Now, Mr. Nuri, you say you wanted weeds, right? Yeah. But let me tell you what the Prime Minister said a few months ago in July. He said, uh, but by the end of this year, you'll know exactly where we're heading. And so far as investors are concerned, that's our mantra of the Progressive Liberal Party, is Bahamians first. And I expect Bahamians to be involved in that business. I don't know. That sentence didn't really make much sense to me. Uh, But by the end of this year, you'll know exactly where we're heading. And so far as as investors are concerned, that's our mantra of the PLP, is Bahamians first. And I expect Bahamians to be involved in that business. You expect Bahamians to be in that business? I say, no, it got to be a limited amount. I just want Ras to be able to sell something. No, it ain't going to happen like that. You know, you, you know that, and I know that's not going to happen. Let's, let's be realistic. And I, I want to know who, what part of weed is going to be legalized. Is it going to be for the hospitals or uh, it's ma- gonna uh, be medical? Pro- it's going to be probably from the pharmaceutical position, from the pharmacy. No. Ra- Rasta can't no, sell no medical Rasta, weed. No, no but that's what I'm saying. They, they're probably going to allow people to grow cannabis for medicinal my, for medicinal cannabis purposes. Who's going to buy that? I doubt that. They're going to be exporting it. I don't think we anything's going to be... I, I no weed. That, oh, yeah. No. They ain't processing we it locally. No weed. What they, how they can process, what they can do with it locally? There's no demand for no bohemian weed. What they can do with it locally, then? Nah, that's just what it is. I watch it's it now. It's for medicinal uses. Who, who, who can turn it's it into... For, it's for tourism. It's for Look tourism. Look like this weed coming out. This weed thing ain't coming about. This weed thing ain't coming about. If a tourist comes here and he want to smoke... Because we ain't exporting no weed. No, no, I'm saying if a tourist comes here and he or she wishes to smoke, then they would then acquire a temporary license. Permit. Or permit. Yeah. To smoke while in Behemoth the Bahamas weed. at this time. But the him and weed. We and you pay your have no 30 or your 50 dollars, and they do that, and when they leave, that expires when they leave. That's how that happens. It, and it, then for the Bahamas itself... They got to be sick. You go to the doctor, he then writes a letter to whomever um, going to get the license... And you go there and you pay your yearly fee or your six month fee or however it go and you go get yourself. And, and it can't be no ordinary weed for no for no medical purposes. It gotta be a specialized it can be a specialized weed. I know on on, on 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 Comfort Street, the weed that is smoked sell there ain't for no medicine. 
<laughs> that, that, that's the, that weed. That's a, that's Listen, a, that's gentlemen. A, that's the tea. <laughs> that's the tea. That's give you a headache. I mean, you be mild, mellow out, right? But you can't use that for no medication. Listen, sir, your show is going to end at any moment now. We're at the 11.59 minute. All I want to say is this, is that they're not going to legalize anything for any local consumption. Man. If anything gets legalized, it'll be for export only. But let yeah, me remind no you all, the law as it exists right now permits authorization of everything that this it's new legislation is offering. Go. You got to go. This has been Guardian Radio in the AM with Aaron Green and Ian Munnings. Have a wonderful day. And have, thank you for everyone who wished me happy birthday. Thanks.